Hello, lovely internet strangers. Today's video is going to be kind of ranty, rambly, very off the cuff. I'm speaking on a topic that is very close to my heart, so I didn't do a lot of prep for this video other than identifying this article a couple of weeks ago that I knew I wanted to use as a jumping off point to get some of my thoughts out on the topic of Latino identity and in particular the identity of being half because I am half Latina. One of my parents is Latino. It's a really big topic, so I wanted to use an article to kind of focus my thoughts. So this article was about James Roday, who is one of the co-stars of the TV show Psych, which I am a big fan of. Go ahead and judge me, I don't care. He recently decided to reclaim his birth name of Rodriguez because Roday is his stage name. James Rodriguez was a freshman at New York University when the then aspiring actor first learned that his Mexican-American heritage was going to be a problem for Hollywood. Imagine my shock. He had just nailed an audition for a big feature film, but the casting director was put off by the fact that his Caucasian-like skin tone was out of sync with his last name. So he was offered the chance to read for the role of a gang member, only to be told that he wasn't right for that either. I didn't look Latino enough, he recalls. They basically didn't know what to do with me. The movie was Primal Fear. The lead role in question launched Ed Norton's career. Where do I begin? So a few things off the bat. One, it's no surprise that the casting director reacted this way because most people have a certain opinion about what it means to look Latino, and that is not confined to the Hollywood casting couch. That is most people. I experienced that constantly throughout my life, that I didn't look Latino. Having a Latino last name was confusing for people, same as him. And what people really don't get is that there are people who are 100% Latino, not even half, who have totally white skin. Being Hispanic, being Latino, that is an ethnicity that tells you about where the this person is from, the language that their country speaks, not what they look like, not their race. Especially in certain countries in South America, like Argentina, where there's a large diaspora from Europe, looking white does not disqualify you from being even 100% Latino, Hispanic, whatever word you want to use. I refuse to use the term Latinx, and that's a whole separate video. So the reaction from this casting director is nothing that's a surprise to me, nor should it be a surprise to anyone. I love this implication that if James Orday had been cast instead of Ed Norton, it would have launched his career. How do you know that? Like, I like the show Psych, but James Roday is not near the caliber of actor that Ed Norton is. I see no reason to believe that this necessarily would have launched James Roday's career, that it was specifically the movie versus Ed Norton's performance in that role. Three years later, on the eve of his college graduation, Rodriguez nailed another big audition for a series regular role in a buzzy DreamWorks produced TV pilot, but the issue of his counterintuitive surname came up again. They said, you might want to give some real consideration to changing your name. And with that, James Rodriguez morphed into James Roday. This is not some new issue. Hollywood has always been this way on a multitude of issues from race and ethnicity to gender. It matters to them how you look. That has changed to a certain degree, but I feel like it's just changed in different ways. Maybe now it's whatever is the look of the day. Maybe bigger women are getting more roles, but that's because it's what society says is okay. It's what's trendy. Hollywood just goes along with whatever they think is going to sell. I'm kind of confused by the last name as a sticking point. Like, I don't know if they really think that audiences pay that much attention to someone's name that they'll be like, wait, why is this last name Rodriguez, but he's white? Oh my God, Karen, you can't just ask people why they're white. And the article continues. Two decades later, he's morphing back. Wednesday's anticipated premiere of Psych 2, Lassie Come Home will usher in the arrival of James Roday Rodriguez. This is the best fucking part. He's not even dropping the Roday part to go back to James Rodriguez. He's adding the Rodriguez back to, you know, let people know his Latino cred. In an extensive interview with TV Line, Rodriguez breaks down those two inauspicious audition experiences that led him to drop his birth name and opens up about how some two decades later, the death of George Floyd and the global reckoning with racial injustice that it triggered prompted him to take it back. So TV Line asks, how did you arrive at this decision? Yes, please explain more. James Roday answers, we're all on our own journeys and everyone is hopefully educating themselves and self-reflecting in a way that feels most efficient and actionable to them. For me, because I've always had a bit of a strange relationship with my own heritage, I started talking to my dad in like a real way as opposed to, hey, what's up? What does Christmas look like? this year. On one hand, it's unfortunate that it took the world turning upside down for that to sink in. On the other hand, it was so edifying listening to my father talk about what it was like to be a brown person growing up in this country. Having him relay to me stories about my grandparents and their experiences in the 30s and 40s. These were not stories that were shared around the Christmas tree when I was a kid. Stuff that I was one or two generations
generations removed from and never needed to reconcile or even stop and think about. It basically blew up my own relationship with my race, my sense of who I am, and when it comes to my relationship with that half of me. And it sent me down a road of reading and wanting to learn more about Mexican-American history and its foundation in this country. And it caused me to question a lot of the decisions that I have made as a 44-year-old man who has been working in the entertainment industry for 20 years. The biggest of which was the decision to not use my birth name when I started working professionally. The fact that my birth name is Rodriguez is out there on the internet. I've never buried it, but I've also never led with it. Where do I even fucking begin, guys? So going back a bit, first he says that the death of George Floyd is what prompted him to take a look at his life and take back that name as if someone took it from him and he didn't give it up himself willingly. No one kidnapped your name. You gave it up for adoption. Even if I'm going with the whole, this incident triggered me to think about my life. Black Lives Matter has been around for several years and it never popped into this guy's head before to think about any of this. This guy is a celebrity. I mean, he's not like Tom Hanks, but he's someone who's known for a particular role. But the show is basically over. Doesn't seem like he has anything else lined up that's gonna skyrocket him to greater fame. And this just feels like a cry for attention. It's like, look at me, let me talk about my Latino cred. Because as he says, the fact that his birth name is Rodriguez is out there. I've known this for a long time. I thought it was cool that he was also what I refer to as a covert Latino. The Latino that no one knows is Latino, so you can infiltrate the white spaces. I've known this for a while. He's just never led with it. He's never put it in his Twitter bio so everyone can see how many oppression points he has. And like, cool for him. I'm glad this moment in time forced him to go talk to his dad and have real conversations with him. Cause you know, you're 44, so your dad's probably not long for this world. It's really unfortunate that it took this incident for you to talk to him in a real way and hear his stories and hear about your family's heritage. By my teenage years, and certainly by my 20s, I knew a lot of these things. I wanted to know and it occurred to me to ask them. It didn't take some totally unrelated incident, something happening in the black community to make me ask my dad about my Latino heritage and stories about his family. Latinos are very into telling stories and family and the generational history. So it's really surprising to me that he managed to go without that until age 44. And like the whole focus here is about his journey and what he went through and how much he learned and all this stuff. It's like, cool story, bro. You do you. I'm really glad this was like so meaningful for you, but who the fuck cares? So he tells the story of why he decided to drop his name originally. He says, the first two experiences I had auditioning for work as an actor were both highly informed by the fact that my name did not match my skin tone. The first audition I ever had was for the lead in a major movie and the casting director said to me, you're so great, but I don't think I can call you back because your last name is Rodriguez, but I can call you back for this four line role for a gang member, which I ended up reading for, but they said I wasn't right for that either because I didn't look Latino enough. They basically basically didn't know what to do with me. They ask, what was the project? He says, primal fear. What happened from there? Three years pass and about a month before graduation on a fluke, I get a meeting with an agent and she decides to represent me. And she sends me on an audition the next day. And in a matter of about 72 hours, I ditched two days of class. I auditioned for the pilot. They signed me to a test deal. And the next thing I know, I'm on a plane to Los Angeles and told in no uncertain terms, you are our guy. Their only concern was that the role wasn't written for a Hispanic or Mexican person. They were worried that casting a white guy with a Mexican name could be construed as their version of diverse casting. And there could be a backlash. They said, you might want to give some real consideration to changing your name. Now imagine someone giving that advice to an actor out loud today with the climate and cancel culture. That's it. They're done. But this is the late nineties. It was a different time. And frankly, my first two experiences kind of proved the point that they were making. I don't know if giving that advice to someone today would get you canceled because my experience is that if you're white and you're Latino, you don't count as Latino because you have white passing privilege because people just think you're white and they can't smell the history. Hispanic on you and they can't see it because they don't understand that Latinos are white a lot of the time. So you have this white passing privilege and go fuck yourself. You don't get any oppression points. You're not one of us. So yeah, I think even today it would be a fucking problem for them if they cast someone who is white with a Hispanic last name and there are no other diverse characters on the show. It'll be like, oh, well, you're making some sort of concession to diversity because he has this Latino last name, but he's one of those white passing Latinos who don't really count for shit. You're casting someone who's got that Latino flavor, but is palatable to white people. I don't know if this would get actually said today, but I think people would probably follow a similar protocol. When people are casting for diverse characters on shows today, they're not looking for the white passing or the light skin. They're always being pushed to use more darker skinned people, people who look the part. He's asked, how old were you? I was 21 and I had this bird in hand that I never dreamt I'd have. I had this decision to make. So I called my dad. I was really nervous. 
Harris because he's a proud Air Force veteran and he's a proud Mexican American man. I was like, dad, I don't even know how to say this, but this amazing job has come up, but they think I should change my name because I don't look Mexican enough. The man did not miss a beat. He cut me off and said, son, this is your dream. You got to do what you got to do. And that was it. He let me off the hook. There was no further discussion. I didn't have to say anything to my grandparents. He took care of all of that. And sure enough, I did the pilot. I came up with this name that I pulled right out of a checkoff play that I was doing at the time. And I've been Rodé ever since. And 20 years later, I realized I essentially perpetuated an institutionalized element of what's broken about this industry, which is, of course, a microcosm of the world we are living in. I can't excuse the decision because of youth or naivete or ambition. The bottom line is I sold out my heritage in about 15 seconds to have a shot at being an actor. And they note that the pilot was ultimately not ordered to series. Where again do I even fucking begin? This is a standard story. If you want to be an actor in Hollywood, you're going to sell your soul to some degree. You're going to do what you got to do, as his dad said. And how nice is it that his dad recognized what his son was trying to do and said, it's okay. You can do that. No guilt here. What a fucking amazing father this man has. And he says that he can't excuse his decision because of youth or naivete or ambition. Sure you can. You were young and ambitious and you wanted to get into Hollywood and that's what you had to do. Like he never would have been on psych if he hadn't made that choice. He'd be toiling in obscurity somewhere. The only reason he even has a platform to talk about the fact that he sold out his heritage is because he sold out his heritage. That is how he got here. And plenty of people did it that way. There are plenty of women who compromise on their integrity to get to where they are. And I don't really see a problem with valuing your career more than parts of your integrity, so to speak. Who cares what your name is while you're acting? He obviously didn't have some big dream that he was gonna be representative of the Latino community and make other Latinos feel like they could put their Latino heritage out there. And even if he had kept his last name, it's not like he looks Latino to most of the fucking world, so he's not representative of shit. He just looks like a white guy. If he had decided to not change his name back in the day, he would have just been beating his head against a wall. He had no power if he would rather not work in an industry that would cause him to compromise himself and his identity and his heritage like that, then fine. But clearly that was not the case. It's really easy for him to sit here now that he's made his success and look back and shit on his younger self and say, look at what I did that was so horrible and get his virtue signaling points that he's so hungry for. It's like, give me a break. You would go back and do the same fucking thing. They mentioned that the theory online was that he had changed his name because there was already an actor with the name James Rodriguez. He says, yeah, I think my agent came back the next day and was like, by the way, there is a James Rodriguez in the Screen Actors Guild. So you would have had to use a middle initial or something. And I was like, ah, then it was meant to be. And that became the explanation. But in reality, it was not. It was something that I used to make myself feel better and to sleep at night. But now I'm going to go back to the name I was born with. It's long overdue. I'm a little bummed out that my grandparents are not alive to see it, but my dad is. And I think it will mean something to him. That in and of itself is reason enough for me. Cool story, bro. You had this story you used to tell yourself to make yourself feel better about why you sold out your integrity, why you sold out your heritage to get into a soulless industry. You think it'll mean something to your dad. But your dad is also the one that said it was fine and let you off the hook. It's not like some moving story where it's like your dad was devastated because you let go of your heritage and now you're giving it back to him. Latino dads are not shy about letting you know when you fucked up. So if his dad did not say, son, you fucked up, then it was fine because Latinos love to hold a goddamn grudge. It is a fucking Olympic sport for them. Let me tell you. And then he notes that his name will officially be James Rodé Rodriguez, which is actually what's on every legal document that I have, including including my driver's license and my passport. When I changed my name, I never got rid of Rodriguez. I just replaced my given middle name, David, with Rodé. So it's always been there. Just no one could see it. Now they will. Again, it's about this like visibility virtue signaling points. He always was still using Rodriguez in his regular life. It was just in his acting roles that that part was removed. And now he's just adding it back so everyone can see because they can't tell from his face that he's not just a white guy. He's also Latino. People are fucking ignorant. It's like anyone who's watched Chris Reagan for a long time will know that he's Puerto Rican, but to the casual observer, they just think he's some white guy. But anyone who knows anything about what Latinos look like can look at Chris Reagan and see immediately that he is Latino. I saw the same thing with someone shitting on Cassandra Fairbanks saying she was allegedly Puerto Rican. And I was like, as someone who's Puerto Rican, I can tell you that one look at her, she is Puerto Rican. It's so obvious, but people are so ignorant of what Latinos look like. And that's fine. They don't have to know what 
Latinos look like from every different country and the nuances and the subtleties. Just like most people can't tell the difference between what Koreans look like, Chinese people, Japanese people. That's fine. You're not from there. It's not like your fucking job to know exactly what people look like from all these different countries. But I get so annoyed that people won't acknowledge that ignorance that they have. And they try to say things like, you don't look Latino. It's like, do you know how fucking bigoted you are? So stop shitting on other people for their bias and their ignorance and take a look at the goddamn mirror. So he says, the last thing I would ever want in a million years is for anyone to feel like I'm co-opting a movement to point a light at myself. No, he wouldn't want anyone to think that even though that's exactly what's happening. But the truth is, it's a deeply personal decision that I am doing for me. Just the timing is just so interesting of this personal decision you've made just for yourself. It's fascinating. And I just hope that it's something that can be amplified. I hope we are all having these conversations in our lives. I hope we are all reflecting. I hope we're all learning shit that we thought we knew but didn't know. And I hope we're all chasing the best versions of ourselves moving forward. Who cares about me? Very good question I've been asking myself this entire article. The point is, now is the time to dig in and seize the opportunity collectively to just be better. I don't need to sit here and be lectured by someone who's fucking 44 and never fucking asked their father a goddamn thing about his life and his past and the family history. You're such a fucking narcissist that it took you four decades of your life to fucking come to that conclusion because there was some fucking thing on the news that turned into a goddamn movement. And not only that, you decided to do a fucking interview about it to make sure everyone knew about this deeply personal decision that you had made. Like, I guess because he's an actor and if he's gonna start using a different name, then people are gonna be like, oh, what's that about? Fine. But it shouldn't be a big deal to have a Latino last name. So why even say anything about it at all? Just be like, yeah, that's my name. I'm James Rodé Rodriguez. I'm half Mexican. Good night. He continues, I want to be the best, most honest ally and amplifier that I can be for my own community and for my friends of color. I don't think any of us could do that if we're not even putting the truest versions of ourselves out there. It just seems like a hurdle right out of the gate. I just really hope that this is something that we can all sustain. I don't want this to be the thing that I look back at and go, oh, remember that three month period where we all got woke and I changed my fucking name? That is exactly what it's gonna be, you fucking tool. I have never felt so activated in my life, nor have I ever been this aware of what is going on around me and inside of me. Ugh. I do feel that we are living through an incredibly pivotal moment right now. I pray it can sustain itself. Like, just give me a fucking break. Like, this is not all about you. And then he's asked, do you identify as Mexican American? For most of my life, I've identified as Mexican American once or twice a year. And that's when I go home and see all the Mexicans. Laughs. It is a stark reminder because it's not like I'm related to a bunch of Mexicans that look white. I'm related to Mexicans. And many of them married other Mexicans who had children that look very Mexican. So in those moments, 364 days of the year, I look and feel one way. And then one day feels differently. I'm also half Latina. I don't just identify as Puerto Rican when I go visit my family. Like being Puerto Rican is something that has been part of my identity for my whole life. And this is where he shows his fucking ignorance because there are plenty of lighter skinned Mexicans, depending on where you live in Mexico. It's a huge fucking country. So he has to throw in this point about cred that it's not that the rest of his family is also white passing. He has people in his family that if you looked at them, you would not be mistaken about the fact that they are Latino. The point is race is separate from ethnicity. You can be black and Latino. You can be white and Latino. You can have a range of skin tones from super pale, like one of my aunts who looked like Morticia Adams, but had Latino features to someone who looks totally black. You would never know that they were Latino, like someone else that I know personally. And every fucking thing in between. Latino does not tell anyone what your skin color is. So the rest of the article just talks about the new psych movie. So I will end my review of the article there. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And I hope to have more content for you very soon.